Did you get your spike ball team in there? Uh, Don't do all spike ball. <laughs> this is. I need to hit that thing. Shots fired over here. This is the extra extracurricular meeting at um, May 8th at 6:55 p.m. This is Chanya Bell. I have Mrs. Leone, Mr. Scott, Mrs. Thompson, and Ms. Schmidt present. No, thank you. Thank you. Hmm? Um, the marching. The first thing on the agenda is the marching band trip plans for 2024. Uh, Hi, Maggie Oswald here, the high school band director. Uh, it's a slight misnomer because it's actually a music department trip. Um, okay. And so it'll be the whole department traveling. Uh, we're hoping to go to Orlando. And I know this is a little out of order that normally this would come in in the August board meeting of next year. However, Disney requires that we do an application. And the applications open about a year in advance of, them, uh, of your trip date plans. And the earlier that you put your application in, the higher chance that you have of going and performing at Disney. So, um, so I'm just kind of here to seek permission um, to not necessarily that we need to approve the trip right now, but that you're uh, that we're all okay that we go ahead and go forward with an application um, for this trip moving forward. Um, so this is our normal approval document that you guys have, um, and uh, we're we're proposing two date ranges. Um, Mr. Spores and I have looked at all of the possible trip uh, like happenings in the, the crazy calendar. You should see my, my life is like mapped out to the details. And so we have two date ranges that don't really overlap with things. The first one would be April 22nd to 28th. It would only be a five day trip. Um, so while that date range is longer than five days, it's going to be a, fi uh, a five day, four night trip. Um, but again, the ranges just help us with the Disney uh, application process, help us to sort of maximize our potentials of getting in and being able to perform at a Disney park um, and get that really awesome shot of your marching band marching down Main Street with the magic castle happening, the whole castle in the background. Um, so Mrs. Ben and I would both be going on the trip. Um, this company, Bob Rogers Travel, is a uh, company I've worked with before. Um, the price sticker point is going to look a little shocking on the back. You should have, there, there was an earlier one, so I don't know how early um, Eileen printed for us, but it's, it's $18.99 is our trip. However, I will tell you they quoted me a price last time, and then the last time I went with them, it came $200 off. So um, that's sort of the sticker shock crazy price, and then we hope that we can bring that down through fundraising and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, all the details include what that price per person is, which has the airfare, it has our meals, the motor coach, the hotel, um, has our Disney tickets. We'll also be doing a uh, Disney clinic, which is one of the coolest things I've done as a teacher. You get to go into the Disney, the backstage at Epcot, um, and there is both a choral uh, version where they're learning how to do voice acting, and they learn and perform a song. Um, and then on the choir side, or on the band side rather, we learn about soundtracks and how to sort of bring, uh, we talk about how you bring uh, movies to life with soundtracks. So uh, it involves a choir performance, uh, a marching band performance, as well as these instrumental clinics. Um, and all through Walt Disney World um, and all that kind of good stuff. And again, we're seeking your permission and approval here to go ahead and apply for this, this trip. Not necessarily that you have to stamp of approved just because we have that, that year sort of deadline. Um, just to, and uh, you know, nobody cares my opinion, but I'm going to offer it anyway. Um, my daughter, not with Dania Boone, but with the Cavalcade of Bands Honor Band, went to the Rose Parade a couple years ago, and they did the same thing the back, behind the scenes at Disneyland, mm -hmm. and um, got a lot of photos. My husband, since he was a, um, he was a chaperone, got to see it all, and you know, it was pretty it was pretty amazing, you know, for the kids. It was really awesome. Do you, have, uh, do you anticipate about how many students? So we have it at 70 to 75, uh, approximately 75, and that's honestly based on our Williamsburg trip that we took uh, oh, a year ago. I don't even, yeah, a year ago. So that's around the same number. It could uh, go up. I mean, Disney's a big seller for kids, so we just kind of put it at the same ballpark that we had for Williamsburg. Um, uh, both the band and choir numbers are, are sort of on the positive side of things. So I'm, I was, I had said more, and Mrs. Ben said, no, say 75. And I said, okay, I'll, whatever you say. <laughs> I trust her in all things. 
So what does the school pay for contribute for this? Nothing. Right? Nothing. Okay. Kids do their own fundraising. We do fundraising. Um, the flight, uh, we have several options. We're not anticipating a charter flight. We are thinking probably commercial, but we, we actually did explore with the Bob Rogers company a charter flight out of out of Redding. Out of Redding. They, yeah. they'll, they'll do that for boss jobs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, so wow. you, you looked into it. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's we, what this we can't is. but get flights until about a year out. Even a charter flight you can't get, uh, which is why the price is an estimate right sure. now. It's actually no, cheaper than you think. It really is. Yeah, it really is. Genuinely. Yeah, it's, it's cheaper yeah. than you think. Yeah. Especially if you're talking about that many people. Right. And yeah, and we're talking about an equipment. Yeah. Goes. goes high, high, high shelf, uh, top shelf for us. Yeah. <laughs> Pink DB on the side of the yeah. 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 logo. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, we are actually buying the plane for the day. <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah. Uh, take, please strike that from the record. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I love it. Yeah. They'll, be, they'll be fundraisers. They'll be fundraisers and the kids will... They'll come out of the uh, general fund. <laughs> so there'll be fundraisers and the kids will pay for some of it. And, Correct. You the, know. Boosters, the boosters have individual account fundraisers as well as we do things that will help. So we, we plan to take an equipment truck down to help offset the cost because flying a tuba gives you an upset. Yes. <laughs> so we actually, we actually would put, uh, we, would, uh, we have a very delightful booster program and um, I, in every trip, I'm, I used to go from New Hampshire. I would have people beg me to drive the truck, which I yes. think Julia and I will do yeah, that. We'll be, yeah, we'll be driving the truck. Julia and I will <laughs> volunteer to do that. Yeah. We do some fundraising like that to help offset the cost of the truck being, and so the equipment drives down, and that's a little bit safer, too, than putting it on a plane and having it potentially damaged in transit. So, um, But we do fundraisers sort of to offset the large costs, and then kids, students can do individual fundraisers. This, what so, I'm looking at, is it's been both since Mr. McAdams was around since we had one. I might have missed that if you mentioned it already. I did not know. Um, but it's not that far off price-wise. I know that there's a little bit more built in, baked into the cost of the flight, but it's not that far off of what that had been not eight or 10 years ago. No, it's not. A tracking app? Yeah, Bob Rogers is really, yeah. I it, it think it tracks, uh, like it's, I don't know a lot about that. We didn't have that, we weren't that cool when I went. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. I can find more about that. And also, we don't have to accept the tracking messaging. <laughs> the main reason I had Mrs. Oswald here after we met was because of the application process. She's obviously going to have to tell the kids what they're performing for, why they're recording it. And I didn't want them in the news getting out that we're planning a trip before we actually brought it to you. So the soft yes is just for them to begin the application process and begin the recordings, mm -hmm. send to Disney, and then we have to see what Disney says as far as performance times to choose our window for the August yep. approval process. And if Disney does reject us or reject one of the groups, we will then explore a Universal as a backup option. So we have several several things in the fire, but we just want to make sure that we're moving forward on this so that we have. Yeah, the and the kids are going to have to make an audition. A yes. couple of audition tapes. Correct. Yes, the, and and they're going to think I'm really weird when I say, "Hey, can I film you in a parade band?" And they're like, I'm "That awesome. sounds awesome." Yeah. <laughs> they're like, yeah. "We don't really do field shows. What do you mean parade yeah. band?" So. Well, good luck. Yep. We're all okay. <laughs> Oh, I think so. Yeah. Yep. Do you have more? Yeah, that sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. I want to see Julie uh, up in the truck. <laughs> I want to see them drive in the truck. Off. <laughs> and <time. laughs> I'll remember that for later. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank it's you. Hold them to it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. They will. Don't forget me. It's recorded. <laughs> Thank you. We got to yeah. bring Dave because he's a better roadie than I am. That's was. fine. <laughs> I don't care. I'll go in the back with the instruments. I don't care. <laughs> She's How much do you have? I have spring sports update and the results of the lacrosse survey and presentation. Okay, so before they leave, um, I know music in our schools was last month, but I have something for Mr. Spores and Mrs. Ben, who's not here, and Ms. Uh, Ms. Oswald. So oh, that's nice. You remember that we uh, had um, the uh, we had the uh, the whatever the jazz band spectacular 50 years of jazz at the Um It was actually a little more than 50 years because 
we didn't have it during COVID. We didn't have the event, but um, everybody who was on the Dania Boone Jazz Band, plus Mrs. Plus Mrs. Oswald, plus alum, our alumni, Josh, Josh Gowell, signed this. And I have one for, um, I have actually one for all of the music people in the, in the school district, but you guys are the only ones in here. So <laughs> I, I do want to put, these are gifts for you guys from me. So I'm gonna put your names on them so that when you move out, when you retire, <laughs> nobody thinks you're taking something wrong to school. So, um, so that's why I grabbed a Sharpie. So I'll have them done in a couple minutes. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, that's really cool. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Spring sports update. All right, spring sports update. Um, in tennis, we had Evan Miller win his uh, play two singles for Burks, this is the second year in a row for Evan. Um, Sam Shank went to districts. Uh, he was an at-large, and he actually won his first match, which is the first time a Daniel Boone tennis player has won a singles match at districts. Um, and we're waiting patiently for Sam and Evan to hear if they will be going to district doubles this week. Unified Track will compete at uh, regionals this Thursday at Potts Road. Uh, with Pottsgrove and Satterton. Uh, winner of that one goes to state, similar to what, what we did last year. Uh, baseball's looking pretty good right now um, for both the Burks playoffs. Uh, they look like they're at 60, um, and then they're 11th in the district. And I say looking because uh, there's a tendency for, for schools not to update their scores um, in a timely manner. Uh, and it's all, based on, um, it's all based on power rankings. So if a school is late putting their scores in, um, it can kind of skew how things, how teams fall or where they sit. Um, but they're both, um, baseball is, is 6 and 11, so I think they have, they have a little room to sweep around there. Boys volleyball is kind of in the same boat. They're 14th in the district right now. Um, there are some games to go for both of those teams. Um, while our teams are done, they have until, I believe, uh, next week um, to count games towards power rankings. So we're just kind of waiting some people out. Um, track and field uh, will uh, attend the firing meet uh, this week, which is the Burks Championships. Um, and then they have so far qualified three for districts, uh, Christian Cremai in the hurdles and the javelin. Uh, Kyrie Inman just um, qualified last week in the pole vault, and Giselle Yim had a fantastic weekend up at the Shaner. Uh, she's qualified in the 100 and the 200. So we still have uh, still have a chance to qualify um, a few more, but that's kind of where we are in terms of... You said pole vault, 100 meter, 200. What was the first one? Um, Christian is the hurdles and the javelin. Okay. Um, we have two teams. Actually, I'm sorry, I didn't use the teams. We have one team that will be competing at nationals, and that's boys bowling. Uh, that's in the summer. Um, Evan Miller will compete individually. And then our wrestlers, Tucker Hogan and Dean Hauser, will uh, be competing all summer and then participating in, at nationals in wrestling. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. It's been a good spring. The results of the lacrosse survey. Yeah, I actually did two surveys. Um, I did um, girls lacrosse at the middle school. Um, and I did one at the high school for girls wrestling, which is the fastest growing sport in the NCAA. Um, both are run through Infinite Campus. And I think, I, I, I wanted to stop it last Friday, end it last Friday, but we're having trouble getting kids to look at their email on Infinite Campus to complete the survey. Um, and girls lacrosse, which I sent it to fifth, sixth, and seventh grade, um, went to 411 girls, 26 responded, um, which is good. I mean, even for a survey, that's pretty good, right? Um, 21 said they would be interested in playing. Um, and I think the, the, the interesting part to that was that only 12 had experience, which tells me 14, you know, 14 do not, which is good. That's great. You know, it's not, you know, you're not looking for everybody to have experience. You're looking to grow the sport. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have kids that are interested in playing, and I think when it comes to lacrosse, there's some, there's some cost that comes with that when you're, when you're talking about playing club. Um, it's a good way to get kids interested. Um, I am leaving it open for another week. Uh, we're going to make a couple announcements at, at the school. 
um, and hang some hang some some signs up that say, "Hey, check your email." Um, we were worried about using um, you know hanging stuff up and using a QR code because we didn't want boys responding. Right. Right. Um, the other <laughs> survey uh, is girls wrestling, and like I said, that's the 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 fastest growing NCAA sport. Um, and I really was interested to hear if it's, it's growing really fast in the births too. Mm -hmm. um, if we had any girls that would be interested in that, because it's, you know, when I think about it, it's opportunities, right? It's opportunities for kids to, to maybe move on and go to college. Um, it's opportunities to, 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 to participate. Um, we had 35 girls respond um, and 10 said they were interested. Obviously none with experience because um, we don't have anyone really in the, in the youth group. Um, the Blazer Girls Club doesn't have any. Uh, they had one last year that I saw. Um, they don't have any this year. Um, I know Coach Hogan is really, we talked about it last week when we were talking about this survey, um, and really trying to push you know, more girls to, to see if they would be interested in participating. Can girls wrestle with boys right now? Uh, right now they do, yes. Yeah. Um, but there's, uh, it actually was just sanctioned by the PIAA because they reached enough teams. When you reach a certain amount of teams that, that sponsor, um, it becomes a PIAA sport, so mm -hmm. it's it's now a PIAA sport. How many teams are in, uh, in Berks County right now? That have girls wrestling? I think we're at six? Yeah, I mean, we're getting probably pretty cool close mass. to six. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't mean that they have, you know, 30 kids. Um, mm -hmm. They could have five. Um, some have, you know, you go by Exeter's gym at night, and, and you know, they have about 25 in there. Um, so it's just a, an interesting um, I thought it, it, opportunities is what it's about. How many do you need for lacrosse? Um, Eleven on the field. Eleven on the field. Um, so if we're at you know if 26 kids and this was just what we got in a week, um, if 26 kids in, in the middle school are interested in, in participating, you know our high school I think from here you can see our high school numbers are um, they're down a little bit. We're at about 24. Um, just by creating that interest at the middle school. Um, we are a little bit behind with some of our sports that, that where they start here at the mm -hmm. high school and they haven't had that training yet at the middle school. And I think that was one of the big reasons why our, some of our, our lacrosse players are really interested in getting our middle school kids more involved. Right. They have more experience when they come up here and they're not just starting picking up a stick for the first time in ninth grade. Mm -hmm. So we'll finish that survey out this, this next week and, and have more details on the next round. Okay. Both of those surveys. And then just the last thing you had was the participation data. So yeah, the, the, and Mr. Hurley and I have been kind of talking this over. Um, you know, the team trends, um, it's, it's specific to, if you look at these numbers, the front, the big one is, is the high school, the smaller one is the middle school. Down a lot. Um, you know, the, the senior class this year did not have a lot of participants in multiple sports. Um, and what we're trying to do is, is get more students out. You know, it's it's a delicate balance because we're not the biggest school, right? So you don't want to steal students from a you know athletes from another sport to to fill a fill you know track. Um, but you also don't want every kid doubling up. You know, and it's, that makes it very hard, especially in the fall and the spring. We do have some kids that double up, so that means they might play a team sport, they might play soccer, um, they might play, uh, they might play tennis or lacrosse, and then they 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 also participate in usually in individual sports, so cross country or track, where they don't have to be there every single day. Um, but it is ta it is that is very difficult, um, and it's not for everybody. We only had probably since I've been here maybe four or five kids that have been able to do that and do it successfully. Um, at both. Um, so we're hoping our trend numbers uh, um, pick back up. The eighth grade class um, has a lot of students in it. They have a lot of student athletes that double up too. Um, and, you know, in the seventh grade also. Uh, looking at the uh, enrollment numbers is also a way to kind of, do, kind of see how uh, things are going to trend. I know, you know, from the elementary schools. Um, the, the enrollment numbers it might be down a little bit for the female athletes. I, think I mean, for the female okay. students. So you can kind of guess what's coming forward. Then there's baseball. There. What is the 22 cuts? I mean, oh, cut. that means we had cuts. That means we had we kept 22, and we actually had to have cuts. What is it though? Because you have baseball, so how many did you and cut? then you have b-ball. Um, um, 
basketball for, uh, are you at the middle school? I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, that's basketball. Okay. That's, yeah. So it's baseball. And we did have, uh, I don't think at the middle school level that, that we had any pets. But for basketball, we had almost 45 kids try out. Oh, wow. Um, which is, it's great. It's a great problem to have. Um, you know, when we try not to cut anything at the middle school, but, you know, for a sport like basketball. You did um, have sport, cuts in baseball, though. Did we? You did. We don't have, like, a not baseball. Baseball. You we had don't have a beat. For, do not for have Pony, a you did. At Pony. Mm -hmm. um, so they don't, if they get caught, they don't have any other option. Then. We feed them into Amity AC. Um, because wow. Amity AC yeah. is from uh, kindergarten all the way up yeah, through they high do school. Have it. Um, and mm -hmm. we've had some students come back out, like go and play in Amity AC, work on their, work on their craft, um, and come back and make a team. Okay. Um, we've had one each year, I think, since I've been here, which is awesome. Cool. Do you have stability in coaches or? Um, not necessarily at the middle school level. I think it's very difficult it's at the middle school it's right level. after school. Um, it's, it's right after school. Um, so you're, you're wanting staff and, and faculty to come and do those things, but sometimes we can't do that. Um, so then you're, then you're hoping for, you know, that, 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 that person that just has a, a regular job, not a, not a teaching job. Um, to make time and find time in their schedule or have a flexible schedule. At 2.30 they have them. Yeah, it yeah. can be difficult. That is hard. Every, it's every night or? Yep. Every um, middle school and high school both. both. It's an everyday thing. Yeah. Okay. Not yet. Okay. Cheer, cheer uniforms. Cheer uniforms. Cheer we uniforms. wanted to add cheer uniforms. Right. Um, and that was not on the agenda, but nope. it was a late ad. Um, our new cheer coach uh, has spoken with her, her athletes, um, has worked with her uh, staff, and in the past we've always, the cheerleaders have bought their own uniforms because they keep them. Um, they would like to get added to the uniform cycle so that we can purchase them, which is fine. I have no problem with that. Um, it just means that they turn them in over again. Just like our other uniforms. Yes. I actually think it's a really great idea. Mm -hmm. Are they We'd, turn them in every year? Mm -hmm. I think, yeah. When we talked about this, um, we talked about this um, a few it's weeks a ago. Savings. It's huge savings um, for the parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It yeah. And, and you know, it's come up about you know with the cost paying that fee, and they don't get a lot. Of, you know, it's become an issue with cheer in the past that we okay. pay the fee and then we don't get a lot out of it. Well, then they'd get it out of it. So they'd be on that uniform they'd cycle. They'd be on the uniform cycle. We'd like every to put four, them on this, yeah. which is something I didn't budget for because it's something different that, right. that the new cheer staff would like to do. So I'd like right. to put them on this because they were due to have new uniforms this year. Right. So I think it's a great idea. And that would be high school, and, I have, um, and I'm assuming it's going to be middle school also. Okay. All right. I'm okay with that. You're okay with that? Okay. Sounds good. Can I put one more thing on? Sure. The, I know, I know. Um, I think I just need to make everybody aware um, we're having a lot of trouble with our scoreboard out at the high school, um, out at the, on the stadium. Um, that I scoreboard that. is over 12 years old. And we're, we're kind of piecing it together right now. So, so we got a new controller. Um, we've put a new drive in. And, and I thought we were doing pretty good. And it, it's been flickering on and off, which is the least of our concerns compared to what it had been doing. Um, I had uh, one company come out last week, Dactronics, which is who uh, our school boards are currently with. I'll have another company come out. Um, we're okay right now in the, in the gyms. Um, we're okay out at softball. Uh, um, obviously, the Legion takes care of, of the school board down there, but, but we are. I'm, I'm really feeling like we're going to need to do something out there, something dramatic. <laughs> At the football field, yeah. Okay. No, I'm good for now. You're out of here. Did you get a quote? I know yet? a guy. Um, I got a, uh, Do you get I'm a new guy? On the quote yeah. with oh, okay. Alex, and then I'm going to have bring in another quote from. Okay. Yeah, second, Can't you guys get sponsors? We can, and that was a big thing from Deptronics. They they sell the sponsorship um, around the board. Um, they actually do that for you with you. Oh, they they help with you. you. They help yes. you. They have a they have a marketing team that actually helps you do that. To they help you haze people into giving. Money. Absolutely awesome. Ooh, great. Yep. 
Yeah, you're right. Yes. I'd go for okay. sponsors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Are we good? Yes. Any public comment? All right. That ends the extracurricular meeting at 7.20 p.m.